The gnome, known by all as the strapped gnome, feared by all, even his very own creatures, the purple streptococci, and due to their fear, expressed only alpha hemolysis as well as biosolubility and optogen sensitivity, for he would kill his prey for their lungs, their brains, and their facial sinuses. He'd hang children's ears right near the spleen. But his fateful end came when the sniper with the pencil took him down. All right, so that was our scene on strep pneumonia. Let's explain what everything represents. So of course, we had this strapped gnome. He was this gnome guy, like one of those cavemen guys, and he strangely had these straps on him. So he was the strapped gnome. Now his creatures who feared him were purple and they were in chains. Actually, some of them were in pairs and some of them were in chains. As streptococci show up in chains or sometimes in short chains and even in pairs. Sometimes we even refer to them as diplococci. As we can see in the gram stain in this cave over here, where we see some short chains as well as some diplococci. Sometimes you'll see these diplococci referred to as lancet shaped. Now back to our creatures. They showed up in chains or in pairs, but in terms of their color, they were purple. As I mentioned several times, our purple creatures represent gram positive ones. As gram positive microbes stain purple in gram staining due to the thick peptidoglycan wall. They're also spherical. As we mentioned, cocci are spherical. So staphylococci species are spherical, and streptococci species are spherical. Alright, we mentioned that due to the fear of the creatures, they were only alpha hemolytic. That is, they cause only partial hemolysis on blood agar and turn the agar green due to hemoglobin oxidation. This is in contrast to Staphylococcus aureus, as we mentioned, as well as Strep agalactae, which we'll see in a future video, which are beta hemolytic. But just remember that in alpha hemolysis, there's some hemolysis, as opposed to, for example, as we'll see in Strep bovis, which is gamma hemolytic, in which there is no hemolysis. But how do we differentiate alpha hemolytic streptococci? For there's another microbe, viridins, viridins streptococci, which we'll talk about soon, which is also alpha hemolytic. So we use two tests, the bile solubility test and the optogen test. And streptomonia, as we saw in the video, is bile soluble. That is, it dissolves in bile and is optogen sensitive. It's sensitive to optogen. This was represented in our scene by the microbe who had the up arrow with sense by his chin. So up arrow, sense, chin, for optogen, sensitive. A strange mnemonic, but it's quite effective. Now before we move on to diseases caused by strep pneumonia, we take a look at this thing that he's holding over here, this scepter or something. This scepter over here with the A on it reminds us of the virulence factor of strep pneumonia, which includes an IgA protease, which inactivates secretory IgA. This is amongst the virulence factors of strep pneumonia. Others include adhesins, which are necessary for adhesion to epithelial cells, and pneumolysin. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention that our gnome in our scene had a hat. He had a cap, as well as our other microbes. And that's because another virulence factor of strep pneumonia is its capsule. The capsule of strep pneumonia is one of its virulence factors, and it protects against phagocytosis. Now remember, this spleen helps get rid of encapsulated pathogens, and that's why patients without a spleen must be vaccinated against encapsulated bacteria, such as strep pneumonia. But anyway, let's talk about diseases caused by strep pneumonia. So we saw the lungs over here, which our gnome would steal from his human prey. These gnomes have a cap on it, not to represent a capsule, but CAP, Community Acquired Pneumonia, as strep pneumonia is the most common cause of community acquired pneumonia. Then we get to the brain in the jar. This brain should remind us of meningitis, which is infection of the meninges of the brain, as strep pneumonia is the most common cause of bacterial meningitis in adults of all ages. Now, we come to the facial sinuses, this skull over here, which he also takes from his prey, and he puts a sign on it, sign for sinusitis. Now, what's interesting is that strep pneumonia actually colonizes the nasal cavities and the sinuses. When there's a patient with a weaker immune system, like the infants and the elderly, it can cause sinusitis. Then we mentioned that he hangs up children's ears. I'm sorry, that's pretty graphic, but don't worry, it's just a cartoon. This child's ear should remind us of otitis media caused by strep pneumonia when it invades the eustachian tube and infects the middle ear. 
Children, of course, present with pain and an earache. Now a few more quick associations. We have the spleen over here. Sepsis is a particular problem, which occurs in patients without a spleen who are infected with bacteria such as streptomoniae. Now this sickle over here represents sickle cell disease, as high-risk groups for a streptomonia infection can include those with chronic diseases, such as besides HIV and cancer, but sickle cell disease, as well as those with functional asplenia. And you may think that this liquid over here is blood, but it's not. Our scenes are not that gory. This is actually rusty sputum, as patients infected with streptomonia present with rusty sputum. All right, now in terms of vaccination and treatment. So let's just have a brief word about vaccination. So there are currently two vaccines available for streptomonia, the pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, which contains capsular material from 23 serotypes. This is the one given to adults. In contrast to the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, which consists of capsular polysaccharides, and this is given to children. And pneumococcal vaccination significantly reduces the risk of invasive pneumococcal disease, and so pneumococcal vaccination is recommended for all children as, as part of routine vaccination, and to adults above the age of 65, as well as to high-risk individuals. In terms of treatment, well, first line is actually the penicillins, and that was represented by the guy with the pencils, shooting the pencils, pencils for penicillins. But due to high resistance, other antibiotics are often used, such as fluoroquinolones, cephalosporins, such as ceftriaxone, and linizolid or vancomycin. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this scene on streptomonia. Take care.